Happy Thanksgiving! Look who's here! Ooh! Putting the apron on. We are prepping for Thanksgiving today, and by popular request, my dad is here to uh, bake with me and this, or cook with me, and get things prepped. So this is going to be a two-day deal. We've already done a lot of things together. Do you remember when we went through the kitchen and we made a list and we got out all of our Thanksgiving stuff and we put it in a bin? I remember. Then you remember when we went to the grocery store? Were you there for that? Mm -hmm. And then when we uh, made our schedule, which let me show you that. Here's my printed out schedule. I told you I'd get nerdy and I'd make an Excel document and doggone I did it. So we've got markings already because I made the brine and I put the turkey in the brine already, which I'll show you and you'll get to enjoy that. And I'll tell you all the recipes in the description box. But today we're gonna prep because tomorrow we're gonna eat and do more cooking and all of the things. And I've got some stations set up, so let me show you that. First up, we've got pie. I'm making two pies. So we've got the pie station. When I did my prep before I went to the grocery store, I put together the pie mix, the brine, all of that. So that is already set to go. We've got the mashed potato section. Today, we're just gonna be peeling them. I wanna make them fresh tomorrow. And I know all of you have a lot of thoughts about that, but Pa and I over here, we discussed and decided that we're gonna make it the day of, or I'm gonna make it the day of, and we'll just peel, soak it in water overnight, and then um, make everything. We gotta chop up some onions. This is the onion station, clearly. And then we're also going to make our stuffing and chop up some other vegetables for that as well. Yeah, okay, here you go. Do you need the directions for how to peel potatoes? Uh, no, if I do, I'll ask Nola. Ask Nola, because she's got a lot to say today. She has a lot to say today. Yes. So let me give you a little overview of what I did for the brine. I made Pioneer Woman's brine. We're making her mashed potatoes. We're making her turkey and her cranberry sauce. Oh yeah, we gotta make cranberry sauce. Last night, we had a friend over and I was gonna make brine last night, but then uh, the night went late. So I did it this morning and I'm gonna show you some video of that. Uh, orange peel, there are mm, peppercorns and sea salt and brown sugar and bay leaves and rosemary and apple juice and water and you boil it and then you cool it and then you pour it over the turkey, you set it in the fridge and bada bing, bada bacon. So would you like to see it? Of course you would, I'll show it to you. for your feet come dance with me and I will tell you when you're older how I loved you just the same it only matters where we're going it never mattered from where you came Hi, Tom. 
time, I'm using the Libby's pie. Marcus's family has used this for years and years. And uh, the only thing that we do different is that we do not put the clove, I believe it is, or the ginger, just cinnamon. So this is two pies worth. The mix has already been doubled. We've got our evaporated milk. We have the vanilla. We have the instructions. I need some eggs. Hold the phone. What recipe did you use? When you made it? Um, cooking? I think I used Joy of Cooking one. Oh, how many of you have the Joy of Cooking recipe book? That's what you used? Yeah, but I always um, fiddled with it, you know, because yeah. we liked ours more spicy. Yes, and, and I like it more sweet. Right, and actually, we would actually put cayenne pepper in ours. Any cayenne pepper people in your pumpkin? Just Whoa. a little bit. Cayenne pepper people in your pumpkin? Wow, that is exciting. This is gonna be so easy, you're not gonna believe it. We're gonna go ahead and throw in the eggs. You know what I don't have is a trash bin. There we go. I feel like I'm getting to know my family this year in a whole new way. Um, more of them prefer pecan pie over pumpkin pie. I'm sorry, what are you putting? This is the only thing I made. I had no idea. All right, we got four eggs. We're going to do vanilla. Uh, maybe, yeah. Two things of vanilla because we're doubling this baby up. And we are going to add in all of the goodness. So when I was a kid, uh, we did go to jail for Thanksgiving one year, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I think twice you guys went to jail. Maybe it was Christmas and Thanksgiving. Maybe that's jail. what it was. Why did we go to jail? Because uh, the church sponsored uh, feeding the folks okay. there. And uh, just part of what we did. We did a lot of service projects. But, uh, yes, okay. Well, I remember, I think my brother went to walk around, right? Didn't he get to go, Willie? Yes. And uh, have a tour there. And then I know we've done several times, like doing soup kitchen type things, which I think is a lot of fun and a very enjoyable time. And I know our church has done several of those yep. type things, or they've had meals ready for people. Pumpkin's going in next. I got a new can opener, which is really nice. The one I had was from uh, a wedding present and it recently went kaput. So it's very nice to have a working can opener. You don't know what you, what you like and what becomes very convenient until it's not working anymore. Hi. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of the and, and I didn't make it with the What does it go? Merrily. Oh, Merrily. Oh, Merrily. I thought you were saying Mary. Oh, very good. Yeah, I'm doing those, and I already did one. I'm doing the one that has a 12. And you remember how to play that? Yep. It's been only two months since we've had practice. Wow. They're going to start practice or lessons again next month. Okay. Dry ingredients have gone in, and then the easiest, this is just easy peasy. I did open up my pie crust, and I need to let it get to a little bit more room temperature-ishness so it doesn't break. So we'll leave that, I'll clean up, we'll move on. Potatoes, potatoes. How many of you guys have seen uh, Faith Like Potatoes? Have you seen that movie? That's a good one. Okay, I'm gonna keep these whole, some of them, my dad's gonna cut them uh, in half, just so maybe a little bit large, and then tomorrow we'll put them in the pressure cooker, and it only takes about eight minutes for them to get soft in there, and make it easy peasy lemon squeezy. So, and don't worry, they're not going down the drain, especially my drain, that would be really bad. <laughs> Cranberry sauce time. Slightly nervous about this, just because, what if it doesn't taste good? But I won't know unless I try, right? Well, I'm gonna make two batches of it, one for this Saturday and then one for Thursday when we do another fun time of goodness. I am going to rinse off the cranberries and then we're gonna stick them in a pot and do a bunch of stuff. Dad, what technique is this here? This is just so your potatoes are always under water because if they come above water, then they turn color. Yeah. You can still eat them, but they just look a little different because they get a little pinkish from oxidation. Mm -hmm. And then you keep them in water for 
couple days even if you wanted to. But this way you have to just put something on top so it keeps you submerged. And you're good. And you're good. I'm certainly not a pink or brown potato person. I would prefer <laughs> my mashed potatoes to be of a white consistency. <laughs> Creamy white. I'll put these in the garage, I'll find a shelf or something. Alright, Izzy, help Papa get that to the garage, would you? Yeah. Thank you. Alright, look at those. Aren't those beautiful? How many of you like to string cranberries? Do you, do you string these? Do you dry them first? No, you wouldn't dry them first. They'd be like craisins almost at that point. We just did a lot of math over here to figure out exactly what's going on. I am doing two things of stuffing, one for tomorrow, one for next week. So I'm gonna have a cup of onion, a cup of carrot, a cup of celery frozen. And then we're gonna do an onion and then a cup of carrot, a cup of celery used for today's stuffing that we're gonna eat tomorrow. Then we have mac and cheese that we're gonna make that takes some onion. So two different mac and cheeses, two different onions. And this one goes for the stuffing. Did everybody follow that? I don't know if I did, we'll see. I feel like this is a circus here. I need to now put the pies in and get those going before the dough gets too squishy. And then we've got this pie. Someday I'll make my own pie crust, but someday is not today. <laughs> you know why? Because I just don't want to. I, uh... <laughs> The questions that are being asked of me right now, I can't. Um, so not like I'm making a stir fry. I don't want them big. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A quarter inch by quarter inch might be yeah. like the tip of your little finger. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, pie time, pie time. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. This uh, pie is just a little deeper. We got 425, 15 minutes. Then we're gonna bring it all down, 350 for 40. Set it. When the knife goes in and no gunk comes off, you know it's done. We're back to the cranberries. This is doubled, so I'm gonna be doing two cups of orange juice. You can use cranberry juice if you want. That would be pretty tart. I considered it, but then I was like, mm, I don't think so. I might need a tad more with that. I'm gonna be using sugar to sweeten this guy up. You can use maple syrup. I know I talked to one of you that said you like to use maple syrup. Not the kind that you're gonna put on your pancakes. Not like, you know, it's all sugared up, that kind of a thing. I'm talking for serious maple syrup. Did I say maple syrup or maple sugar? Maple syrup. Okay, I said the right thing. Well, oh, I thought I was losing my mind. We're gonna mix this. I'm gonna put a little orange zest in here to make it extra zesty good. Look at this, look at the colors, it's beautiful. You hear the chopping? Anybody want a chopping ambiance? Who listens to that stuff on YouTube? You can get like fall ambiance, Christmas. What about Thanksgiving dinner chopping ambiance? It could be good. I don't know how much I'm supposed to be doing here. Just the whole orange sounds about right. It smells good. Give it a good stir, then we're gonna turn it on high, bring it to a boil, and I don't know what else we're gonna do. Let me find out. Okay, then after it comes to a boil, we're gonna let it go for about 10 minutes on a simmer until the juice is thick, and then it's done. Well, that's really easy. It is. Very Shazam, we need that button. Was it from Staples? Well, that yeah. was easy. Okay, it smells amazing, so I have high hopes for you. Come on, cranberry sauce. The efficiency, this man right here. We might get done really, really fast. This might not be quite as exciting as some of you were hoping for, but that's okay. It's still gonna be a good time. So finishing up the chopping, which you're pretty fast there, Dad. <laughs> you got some good chopping skills. You should tell people about your, uh, your background. Well, we can also tell them about the wine that I brought over for you guys. Oh, okay, hold on. I did get a present from dear old dad here. 
Uh, let's see, this one is a 2021 Riesling and it's all in German. How fun is that? And then this one is a red wine. Uh, how do we say it again? Pinot Noir. Yeah, Pinot Noir. <laughs> and it's a Miomi. Miomi? Miomi. It's yep. kind of like Naomi, but Miomi. I like it. That'll be tasty. So that was uh, my present. I invited him over to help me and he brought me a present. What's that about? Here's your for today. That's shown. Yep. Look at that beauty. So this is gonna be for the stuffing that we're gonna put together right now. And that is excellent. <laughs> excellent. So the two wines I brought over, the Riesling is from Germany. It's a medium sweet. It's a Cabernet. There's Riesling comes in three different types. You have an Auslöser, which is really sweet. Uh, Cabernet, which that is met by the medium sweet. And then there's a drier one that can be really dry. Um, and those, Germany does a lot of Riesling wines and they come from different river regions because they grow down the hills of the, the uh, down the hills to, all the way to the basin. And they, so these people are harvesting going up a grade of about 15 to 20%. So it's a lot. Now, it's all by hand when you're doing it. By hand, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't do, most of these areas are done by hand. Uh, then the collection bins are done and they take them off to press them. And then Mayomi, that's an unusual one because Mayomi, this one doesn't have a vintage year on it. So you can't, you have to go to the store and look specifically for it. So most wines will have a vintage year across the top. Right. And you can find Mayomis that are 2021. But the ones you can find now that are a little older say NV on the box. That are shipped to the store in, and it means uh, no vintage. So it's a combination of probably a couple of years. These were bottled in June of last year, and I've had a, a couple of bottles of it already. Really good. Mm. Um, so, the, and uh, Pinot Noir you can serve with turkey. It works really well. It's not as heavy as a, another red. Like you get a Burgundy, or um, uh, even some of the. Cabernets are pretty heavy in their taste. This is pretty light. Uh, Pinot Noir is, is a little more on the mellow side, doesn't have as much acidity to it. And it goes with really anything you can drink it with or drink it all by yourself with popcorn. That's what I do at night. Popcorn, well there you go, <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, Dad. So you're chopping and yep. I mentioned this, uh, what video was it? I think we went to do the grocery haul for Thanksgiving that my dad did all the cooking and my mom just did all the eating of the cooking. <laughs> so when you were doing Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. were you, did you make these Excel documents like I have or you oh, no. were just so good you didn't well, need? I cooked for 20 years in the military and then at home I cooked almost every night. So I did about, well, let's see, I'm almost 70, so 50 years of cooking. But even like a big... I might have re recipes for reference because you want to know how many minutes per pound and you don't want to under the bird that's horrible. Yes. Uh, but most of the common things, there'll be a recipe and then you uh, tweak them, like you like, like talk about pumpkin pie. And then you can also invent your own. See, I'm not, I don't do, <laughs> well, I guess there's certain things once I get used to a recipe, but I typically, I know. I like to follow. Like sweet potatoes, uh, if you want to, a lot of people like candied sweet potatoes, which are good. I mean, they're really sweet. So we don't, we didn't put the marshmallows in it, but we put uh, pineapple chunks in it instead. Oh, the rings or no, chunks? No, just the chunks. Mixed it then, in? Uh-huh. Not on the top. Not on top, uh-huh. So you just mix it in. So it's a little different. Uh, I use carrots a lot for sugar instead of sugar itself, because carrots are sweet. First of all, let's just stop right there. <laughs> Do you know the kind of weird things that I ate as a child that I was traumatized from as a child? What What do you think I was the most traumatized from? Tell them. Musco. Musco. Tell them what that is. Musco is when you open your refrigerator and you look at all the leftovers and say, everything must go. So we made Musco and my children just loved it. Absolutely not. And here's the thing. Okay, so it'd be all the leftover vegetables. Mm -hmm. Then you'd put it in a tomato sauce. Right. Then he would add a can of mushrooms <laughs> and, and, and olives, black olives, into the sauce. And I'm just a child, a small, precious child. So I liked, hold on, I liked vegetables. But do I want reheated mushy vegetables with a can of mushrooms and olives? Oh, and then piled up on top of spaghetti noodles. 
That's torture. That Six, is but torture. we never got we never got uh, reported for child abuse, so it must have been okay. <laughs> Should have. It was traumatizing, but there was lots of good things that were made. It's just that sticks out in my mind. And every child's mind. Every child's family. mind. Yes. Yeah. My kids were gagging this morning when I was making the turkey brine for the smell. It was too strong. Whatever. So I guess it's now come back to me. Did you just throw something you shouldn't? Well, you know. Uh, Nola throws the spoons away, the spoons you don't throw away. Yes. Yeah, and she threw away a bowl yesterday. Did you throw away a bowl? She doesn't mean to be so not so helpful. Do you miss making all the Thanksgiving or all the holiday things? Or as you get older, um, does it become like not that exciting? No, because I'm just by myself. Well, that's true. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, there's, that's exciting, folks. That is exciting. Oh, yeah. Let's move this guy over here. We're going to put him on a simmer. Clearly, he came to a boil. It's because I put the lid on, and I'm a ding-dong. That always happens to me. Wow, those really softened up nicely. I wasn't sure, because they're fairly hard. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. So now we're just gonna simmer it for 10, and then we'll be good but we won't let it explode again, I think. <laughs> Maybe. The pie goes in. Oh, scary. These guys are really popping. I've been smashing some against the side. I think I like it a little less chunky, but still chunky. Is that even a good way to describe food? Does that sound appetizing? <laughs> well, they do have chunky peanut butter. You just don't want chunky milk. Not chunky milk, exactly. That's disgusting. Gross. Cranberry sauce is looking good. Pie is in the oven. Things are cut. We've got this. Um, we're gonna put this in the freezer. And of course, it's not gonna be like crisp or anything, which is fine in the stuffing. I'm not necessarily looking for that. And then we've got onions that are being chopped. I, we're nearly done. It's just gotta finish up the, um, why can I never remember what it's called? Just need to finish up the stuff that I can't think of at the moment. The stuffing, oh, hey, that's great. So I'm gonna saute up the peppers, you know. I'm gonna saute up the onions and the celery and the carrots, yeah. Let me hear you say it. Butter makes it better. better. <laughs> All right, butter in the pan, we're gonna melt it and then add our veggies. Bada bing. Oh, we gotta turn the power on. There we go, there we go. Let's see, look at that. This smells de delicious. It is good. When I was a kid, I don't know if you caught that, my dad came over and was helping me with the butter there. But as a child, um, that would happen a lot. When I'd try to make things and be like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. We haven't cooked together in a long while, have we? Okay. We're gonna get this baby going and let this get to where it's nice and soft and then we'll add all the other goodies. Look at these beauties. So you already saw that. Onions, and we're gonna stick these in the freezer and then I'll just shake them into whatever thing I'm making tomorrow and next week. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Maybe on the top. Okay. Get right. room. Yep, look at that. Boom, will it close? Oh, yes. It's cooking down over here, looking good. Uh, two and a quarter cups of this chicken broth here, and I don't think that's gonna all fit, so we'll just see how much fits and put the rest in with the stuffing later. Actually, yeah, mine fit. This is a pretty large pan. Oh, yes. Okay, chicken broth and broth. Broth and broth and broth. Oh, yeah, 
bueno. Um, add rock heat to a boil. While that boils, and hopefully doesn't go over, we're gonna answer some questions I asked you over on Instagram. Uh, if you have any questions or things you wanted us to chat about. And so now we're gonna do that, you ready? Oh, they wanna know little Megan stories. Do you have any? Little Megan, oh. Come Here's close. the famous little Megan story. We lived in Germany. In Germany they have like broom closets for the part of the kitchen. And it's just like you'd have it next to the, next to the stove or something, it's just part. So little Miss Megan used to uh, find M&Ms, take them, go into the broom closet and close the door and hide and eat them. Have a little treaty treat. See, <laughs> even back then I gotta have my treaty treats, right? Oh yeah. Um, when I was retired, we still lived in Germany. Megan and I would go on walks in the forest because we lived in our apartment building back up right to the forest. So we'd go in the forest and I'd push her along in her buggy and we'd stop every once in a while and pick blackberries because they would grow wild there. And that was always fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting them in the little bike basket. Yep. I mm -hmm. remember. Um, and then when she was older, she graduated uh, top of her class in, in high school. So, um, I said, well, where are you going to go to college? She goes, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to go do an internship in Illinois. I went, yeah, you sure? <laughs> she goes, yeah, I'm going to go, okay. So I thought to myself, oh, well, when she gets finished with her internship, she'll come home, go to college. And I thought I would do that too. I did. Yeah. So at the end of her internship, the first year, she goes, uh, I think I'm going to stay for a second year. I'm thinking to myself, she's never coming home. And guess what? I was right. She never came home. She lived in Illinois the rest of her life. Let's see, I was 18 and I'm 37. So almost 20 years I've been here. That's weird. I know, that is weird. Wow. It's weird to even think 20 years ago I graduated high school. Next next May, it'll be, or June, 20 so, years. I thought Megan was a pretty easy child for the most part. She was. I mean, she was meticulous in her room and stuff, but every year. Every year she'd go to school, she'd come home crying the first day. I'm going to fail. I can't do this. To give us a snapshot what it looks like, she's in the fifth grade, I think, or fourth grade, one of the two, and she's going to do violin. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. So I went to the store, ran into violin, and five days later she goes, you can take it back. I'm not, I can't do it. She hasn't even been to school yet. She hasn't even been to the first day of school with a violin. She goes, I can't play this. If you knew how to play it, you wouldn't be taking lessons. Uh, she did good. And then she changed the flute. Yeah. And she did that for two years and she was awesome. So I wish I would have stuck with violin, but I used to take the bow and I'd slam it on the strings because I get so mad at myself for messing up. But I that would have been nice to keep with. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's nothing worse than having the dad moment when you, your spouse calls you and says, uh, you need to come home right away. And then you, I said, home. She goes, well, actually, no, just meet us at the hospital. Excuse me, meet you at the hospital. Megan had an accident. I said, okay. And you walk in and your child's face has got road rash and their face is all, and it's just, and first thing she says, do I have to go to school tomorrow? My face is a mess. I couldn't even walk. I thought I had broken my foot, but I hadn't. So I was going down this hill and I had both of my feet on one side of a bike. And then what's weird is I remember putting my foot back over and riding for a few seconds and then all of a sudden I wasn't on the bike anymore and I was on the ground and my lip was so swollen and then my elbows were all messed up, my knee and my foot and I really thought I had broken it, I couldn't walk. And that was a Tuesday. By the time I went back to school the next Monday, it was almost as if oh, yeah. it was gone, other than I had a scar a for a bit. long time. You can look at my pictures back then, but yeah, I mean, she, so she I healed really fast. Yeah, they used uh, silver dye on her, mm -hmm. which is and so it was good. I mean, but you know, not a whole lot of Megan stories that are negative. Most of them are very positive. She was an easy kind of child for the most part. And that's when the easiness ended. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the chatting got chatting, so now we're just gonna add the boiled. Mm, chicken broth with the veggies and then the stuffing mix. This doesn't seem very wet. Oh, remember you're gonna cook it again for If it's not wet enough for you, you can always add a little more broth to the camera. There you go. Next thing. Thank you. 
But I'm not cooking this today. Right. Yeah, okay. You'll know when you get finished mixing it whether it's going to be wet or not. Oh, that's, right? it's getting more than I expected. It's easier because yours isn't cubed. Yeah, this isn't cubed. This is no, it's crushed. classic, right. It's, it's more crushed. Oh. So. Well, I'm just getting out of hand. No, out of hand. Out of hand. It's a dad joke if I ever. That's right. That's why they don't publish them. Oh, I'm terrible at mixing her. Can they even see? I'm trying to do like an over the shoulder. Oh, yes. Yeah, this doesn't seem good to me at all. This, this, this. Yep. Okay. Now you can have Brush here if you yeah, want. I will. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll know what's in here, but it's just, <laughs> okay. well, I can put it up here. Well, thank you. Sure. We're done. Look at that. That's exciting. Um, that'll be an easy wash. I bet you, if you're lucky, I'll speed clean it for you. You'll love it. <laughs> Actually, I love doing it because watching back, it's pretty great. <laughs> It could take me 30 minutes, and in the video, it'll look like 15 seconds, 10 seconds. I love it. Okay, we have some more questions. Let's get our lighting just right. What are you doing over there? Okay, that's better. Is your lighting right? Oh, yeah. So beautiful. It's shining off my head, so it must be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see what else they say. I may have to look up. Oh, okay. How many people will you be hosting on Saturday for your first of two Thanksgiving meals? The first one I think I wrote down is a 14, um, including our five children. Right. Nine and adults. then the next one with my dad and my sisters and my nephew, it's like eight to 12, just depending on who shows up. Cause I told them bring a friend if you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's always a surprise who will show up. Uh, will you, be doing a Christmas gift guide or presents you're getting your kitties for Christmas. Yeah, I will definitely show that. We'll do a wrap with me too. As far as a Christmas gift guide, I did something when it was Nola's birthday, like zero to five. Beyond that, my kids just all want the same thing. Like the boys want some Legos. Yeah. They're, they're easy, which is, I'm not mad about that. And then the girls, I mean, it's just kind of all the same thing. So I, I don't know, let me think about it. Um, oh, you might like this one. Mm. This is a deep one. How do I reconnect with God? I feel like I've strayed away and can't seem to reconnect. I reconnect. I miss God. Uh, I would say one of the things about reconnecting is you really have never been disconnected from God. Just because he feels like he's far away uh, doesn't mean he's not present. It's really a kind of an unusual thing. Remember, God exists outside of time. So he's known you before you were created, and then he'll know you, he already knows your end game. So it's more of wanting a sense of presence of God more. So um, there's not a lot of behavior. A lot of people like to put a bunch of behaviors in there saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Not so much. It'd be more like just talking to a parent about, I feel distant from you. How can we get back together? And God's not deaf and God's not immune. He will be glad to speak to you. But I know what you mean. If you feel like you're in the desert looking for an oasis. Mm -hmm. but so Especially if you've gone through trauma or something really oh. difficult that sort of makes you feel separated. Because mm -hmm. you're not only like trying to reconnect with God, you're almost trying to view him in a new way and kind of understand your circumstance. Yeah, and I would also say, give yourself grace. I bet you give grace to other people, but you're not good on giving yourself grace. Yeah? You're trying to... Yeah, well... You know, are you trying to say something here? Oh. It, it is an issue of grace. Uh, remember, God is just and full of grace, both. So it's not... He's not just... He's not keeping a list. He doesn't write your name down and put tick marks. Or look over if you over you and see the next time you fall down. He's, it's not about that. Um, he's the God that puts you on a bicycle when you first learn to ride, knowing that you're going to fall down. No, you're gonna get hurt, but it does it because then you can move forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, how can a God that gave His life be vengeful? So, think that, and also if you have a a local church or something, or you need a, a, a reference for a local church, somehow let us know, and I can get connected with some folks to find to find one. But that's it. And remember, church is not about pews and rows; it's about circles. 
Uh, you have to be connected to small groups. Yeah. Pies are done. Pies are done. <laughs> I also find it helpful to read books about people that have gone through things. For instance, um, what Corey Ten Boom, she's got some books out. Those are really pivotal. And um, there's one called Stepping Heavenward that I thought was really good. And it goes through kind of all of her doubtings and her frustrations and her distance feelings. And it's written, I don't know, 1800s, 19, I can't remember. It's an old book. Um, oh, stepping so, heavenward. I don't know. Oh, you know, she, she's like writing in a journal oh. from when she's 16 all the way until maybe she dies or mm -hmm. is much older. Uh, but that's a really interesting one. Sometimes people feel like God's angry when they doubt. God always, God has never been angry when somebody doubts. Just think of the times that you have in the Gospels when Jesus turns to the guy who is running towards him, leader of the temple, and says, please come to my house, my daughter's dying. And then his servants come and say, don't bother the teacher anymore, your daughter's dead. And Jesus turns to him and says, don't doubt. What do you mean don't doubt? I ran here, she was sick, and now she's dying, and you say, don't doubt? God never gets angry at you about doubting or feeling disconnected. No more than you, if you have children or have somebody that's close to you, are angry at them when they feel disconnected to you. Yeah. Does that help? Hope so. Hope so. I feel encouraged. The dinger went off. The dinger dinged. Whoa. You're gonna burn yourself. Yeah, I sure am. It's scary. Oh, now they look a little jiggly still and they will firm up, but the best test is to stick it in. Oh, and look clean. at that. I'm Beautiful. Clean. So I it's always do good. five minutes less uh, than the time says because I don't want to overdo it. You can always put it back in. Beautiful. No, I think it's good. Yeah, I do too. Because they're going to continue cooking those. Absolutely. You, you cook them in. Uh, those are serious. Yes. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, this was lots of fun. And it, we're now done. That didn't take very long at all. No. That would have taken me a little bit longer. Just a lot of it. But you come back. This video is still going to rock and roll. We got other things to do. Well, first of all, that's all got to get done. And then tomorrow we'll do all of the other cooking. So we're going to make mac and cheese. We're going to make green beans a la lemon. We're going to mm. put the turkey in. We're going to eat whipped cream. Not that that needs any prepping. <laughs> and uh, we'll make coffee. And I think there's some rolls. Oh, goodness gracious. See, it's a good thing I've got my list here or else I would forget all these things. So did we do all that pretty much? You coming back to help me clean the house, yeah? Oh, uh, that would be a no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, come on back now. Bye. Bye. Happy Turkey Day, everybody. Who's ready to make a turkey? Who's ready to make some sides and some goodness? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Did you see yesterday's video? My dad and I did tons of prepping and getting things in order for today, but now it's the actual day and we have to cook. I'm not putting my makeup on for you yet, but I will. You just be patient. So, turkey's in the brine, hanging out in the refrigerator. We gotta rinse it off. Oven is set. We're gonna put it in the oven, get this roll ball and, nope, get this ball rolling, and it's gonna be tasty. Oh, yeah. Once again, enjoy some dishes. Um, we live here. This turkey's been sitting in a brine since yesterday morning. It's got salt and sugar and peppercorns, orange peel, Mmm, rosemary, bay leaves, apple juice, water. That's all I can think about that. Oh, rosemary, did I say that? And the reason that you brine a turkey is to really help the moisture to stay in that bird. Because man, this bird can be dry and you don't want that. So this is a great way to keep it really moist and super flavorful. I love it. So I am gonna rinse it off, pat it dry before we put it in the oven. It can just be a little bit too salty because it's been sitting in that salty water overnight and we don't want it to be too crazy. Although you know I like crazy. Come here, little turkey, turkey, turkey. I forgot there's garlic in here too.
I like to line my pan with foil. I think it just gives it one less like big scrub deal that you're gonna have to do in the end. You can still get your juices out and all of that. It's just a nice way to make cleanup so beautifully easy. We have our roasting grape. Can't think of the name at the moment. Breast side up. Let's just dab, dab, dab him every which way. Excuse me, little gobble. You. Set that there for a hot minute. Okay. Now we need to wind him up. Clearly I got overzealous with the twine. That's mm, unnecessary. We'll take his cute little feet and we'll tie them together. Beautiful, you see that? We'll cover the bird with aluminum foil. Really, really good, tucking everything over the edges. Got more foil than a lady getting a full highlight. Is all of this really necessary? Is it a little out of hand? Yeah. Am I gonna stop? No. You beautiful bird. Let's put it in the oven. 275 degrees, 10 minutes for every pound. This is a 15er. So if you did your math up really good, that's 150 minutes. That's two hours and 30 minutes. I'm about to reveal my very famous roll recipe with you. It's gonna blow your mind, change everything, and uh, I'm a little scared to share it because once it's out there, it's out there. You ready? Here's my recipe. I'm gonna open up this bag of frozen rolls and put it in a pan. Oh, yeah. I might make two pans. I think I'll have enough for that. All right, we're gonna just spray the bottom of the pan. Place our cute little whoop, our cute little rolls. It's supposed to go a certain way. I was able to fit 12 rolls in here, and then I'm gonna try for a few more in here. How many of you make your own rolls? I'll cover them with some plastic wrap, and then these are just gonna rise on the counter for a couple hours. Pray that they don't meld together and, you know, it'll be great. There's a lot. Uh-oh. They're already getting really crazy in there. Ah. One year, my mother-in-law was letting her rolls rise in the oven just from the light heat or whatever but the light wasn't on. And I needed to make something and I didn't know they were in there. And I messed them up. Okay, I have to know what your best, funniest, craziest Thanksgiving or holiday mess up was, goof up was. I'm sure your family's still talking about it and it's just like a great memory that they'll never forget. Okay, well. These babies are gonna rise, rise. Oh, they look perfect, look at them. They're just excellent. How did you roll them so perfect? Well, the thing is, Thanksgiving happens twice around here, at least this year, and this is our first family Thanksgiving, then we're gonna have a different family Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving, separate situations. But I have a turkey in the freezer. Today is Saturday, Thanksgiving. The actual Thanksgiving is Thursday. And that means I'm going to take that turkey out and let it start defrosting now so we, you know, have it ready to go. So this is also your moment. If you need to take anything out of the freezer and let it defrost, today's your day.
I had some time, like a lot of time. I put makeup on, which I'll show you. You'll be so impressed. And then I put out everything that we're gonna be using, plates, napkins, cups. I was just gonna use, you know, our house plates. And then I was like, nah, I don't wanna do that extra washing. Look at these things I got. Super cheap serving set, because I don't have enough serving spoons. It's under $1.50 for each box, which I thought was a steal of a deal. Uh, let me show you what else we're doing. I've got the dishwasher going, so you're gonna hear that but I am prepping my coffee. I'm gonna grind it, and I've already got my water going. Bum -ba -da -dee. That way I can just push the button when it's time. So I got the time to do this since it's about, oh, maybe 30 minutes before I need to do some other food prepping. I did all this, check, check, check. Went to buy green beans last night. They had no green beans, so we're doing canned green beans. Yes, I can go with the flow, right? Then over here, this is a little out of order just because it's okay for it to be that. So I've got about 45 minutes until I need to put my turkey at a higher temp, take off the covering, add the butter, rosemary seasoning, all that goodness. And I'm going to start my potatoes, I think, from a pressure cooker. I'm gonna fill up the pasta water. Let's do that because time's about to get really crazy. Yesterday, my dad peeled all the potatoes and then placed them in cold water, then wrapped them all up and they have been nice and cold. That way they don't brown. Oh yeah, we've got some heavy weights in here to make sure that the water, that the potatoes stayed down in the water. Ooh, that is very cold water. So look at those potatoes, they look beautiful. I'm gonna use this plate to drain it. All we have to do now is put them in our pressure cooker for eight minutes on high, cover them completely with water, and we don't have to add anything else to it. They will cook up beautifully, and then we can start our mashing, which takes no time at all. Add in all the goodies, it's gonna be fantastic. They are fully covered. Oh my word, this thing is talking to me. Then let's see, I'm still new to this, so it's gonna take me a hot minute. Okay. Is there a potato button? No. Oh, look at that. Um. I'm also going to fill up the pot of water for the pasta that we're going to be making for our macaroni and cheese. The turkey is ready to get its bath of butter goodness. So I've softened up some butter just a little too much, but it's whatever. And I need to peel an orange, but I'm going to do it with a vegetable peeler. I just want that top layer off and I'm going to slice these very thin, add that to the butter, add some rosemary, salt, pepper, and then we are gonna rub this turkey like he's at the beach having some time in the sun. We're gonna give it a good covering every which way and add all the extra flavors that we love, right? That also means we're going to up the temperature on the oven from 275, which it's been doing for two and a half hours, to then 350. Every 30 minutes, we're gonna baste it. We're gonna just, it's, we're gonna get happy is what's gonna happen. So let's just slice these little sweeties super thin. Amazing. Stick this. We'll go ahead and put that in our butter. We'll also add four spoons. 
sprigs of rosemary. Let's wash it first. We're gonna strip them and mince them. I love rosemary because it's very easy to work with. We just want, sometimes with cilantro, parsley, you know, even thyme, it's a little more time to get it done. It's just labor intensive, but that's okay. It's all worth it, right? Oh, these smell so good. Now we'll mince them. I always mean to put my towel down. I do. I just like to follow the chopping board all around. We've got our teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. Cracked pepper. Is this the best way to do it, where you just grind it right into it? I don't know. But all that leftover, bing, bing, bing. Let's make room for the gobble, gobble. Give this guy a nice stir. Here's what it's looking like. Ooh. into this fella. Give him a good mmm and it's gonna be amazing. We're not going under the skin and I think it's because of the brine. It's not necessary. But hey, if your heart wants to do it, no one is stopping you. You gotta get it in the crevices for sure. This will really help to brown it up, give it the flavors, all the things. Paint that baby on there. Hello, birdie wordy. Oh, I'm so excited about this. He's got a little too much orange in the armpit. Let's share the well, friend. every 30 minutes until this bird is done. Potatoes are done. Woo! Getting crazy. It's getting too close to my cabinets. So I don't want that. Let's check the potato. Oh, perfection. Excellent. So eight minutes on high. Very, very good. Drain it. We want as much water to get out of there as possible so that it doesn't get gummy and gross. So we're gonna do that. If you were doing this on the stove, you can put your pot, make sure it's dry over low heat when you're mashing. That really helps that extra like wet steam kind of stuff get out. No potato masher, but we'll just do this. So the heat, uh, keeping the heat on is going to be helpful in the process and just help you get a good, not crazy, oh dear. I borrowed my dad's last year and I forgot to borrow it again. I've also done this with a hand mixer, um, but this is new and I don't want to scratch it up, so I'm not going to do that. At this point, you're going to turn off your stove or your pressure cooker. As you know, I have a theory, I have a not even a theory, it's really just the truth that butter makes it better. One and a half sticks of butter. 
This isn't about dieting, folks. Eight ounces of cream cheese. Half a cup, a half a half. And then we're just gonna mash this guy for a good time. We're going to mash, mash. Going to mash, mash. You're just gonna mash until it's all incorporated and mashed. This is a workout for your arm. It's wonderful. That cream cheese really just went right on in, even the butter. Potatoes sure know how to hold their heat, right? Oh. Next up, a half a teaspoon of Lowry seasoning. This is Morton's, but it's, it's the same thing. And then half a teaspoon of black pepper. We'll give this a good stir and then we'll put it up in our pan because this is gonna go in the oven with tons more butter on the top. Tons, yeah, tons. Just a few pats. A little pat here, a little pat there. Mm -mm -mm. I've got water boiling for the mac and cheese. We're gonna be doing elbow noodles with that. So the water's going in here. We're not gonna burn ourselves. We're gonna get smart. Now, I asked you guys over on Instagram if you had anything that you wanted me to talk about. My dad was here yesterday, so we asked him some questions, and there were a couple more. One of you said hi from Germany. Hallo, the gates. So happy when I meet people from all over the world, but you know I was born in Germany, so it's extra fun to talk to those that are in Germany. Another question was that uh, they said, I talk a lot about adoption. Was I adopted? I was not adopted. Uh, my sisters were adopted. I have three adopted sisters. When my mom finally retired from the military when I was 14, they began doing foster care, my mom and dad, and they had over 50 foster children in their home, three of which they adopted. My youngest sister is going to be 20 next month. I am 37. So I am not adopted, but I have adopted sisters. You have met Saya here many times. She is adopted through foster care, but she's my sister all the way. Another question was, uh, are, am I writing down our family recipes, like keeping them for the kids to have? Do I have them written down? Yes, I do. And I am, I try to keep that going and make sure that that's around because it's special. But I would like to make, if just for myself, like a nice book, type thing, find some kind of program that'll make it super easy. You know how that you can make your own picture books of all your family memories. I'd like to do that really simply with a, um, with all of our recipes and then have it available for the children down the road. Come close. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that. Then imagine some more butter on the top, throw it in the oven, get it super excellent all the way through. I'll go ahead and put the pats of butter on it now, I think. Do I wanna do that? These potatoes are still pretty warm. I'm not ready to put them in the oven quite yet. So I'm glad we had that conversation, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> in the meantime, I'll just throw this on the top, set it to the side. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come over here now and salt the water for the pasta. Yes. We will add the pasta, cook it up per directions on here, I always like to do the al dente, so when it says seven to eight, I always do seven. Let's make the sauce, the cheesy goodness for this mac and cheese, and grab out four, I'm doubling this recipe, by the way, but I'm grabbing out four tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna melt it over here in my pot. Yesterday my dad chopped up tons of onions because we're doing two Thanksgivings and I need it for our mac and cheese today, for the mac and cheese next week, and for something else. Oh, for the stuffing for next week. We 
noodles are done, we're going to drain them and then set them off to the side. Oh, and we got to baste the turkey. Basting time. Oh, it's starting to get brown. First of all, I'm going to give it a rotate here. Oh, yeah. because I'm doubling it. More, more. There we go. Let's get those about three minutes. Nice and soft. Delicious. Yes. Onions are done bunno and we're going to add some flour. Thicken this guy up along with some salt and pepper to give it the flavors. So we'll mix this up, make like a little, what would you call that? A roux maybe? Not a kangaroo, but just a roux. A teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. We'll give that a nice little stir. Can you see all that? Get in here, people. Got a little thick paste. We're gonna let it go until it's nice and bubbly. Just keep stirring. You wanna make sure you don't have a big floury taste to it. That wouldn't be very appetizing. All right, I'm liking the bubbliness. I'm gonna take this off the heat and then add four cups of milk, stir it up, then we're gonna bring it to a boil. One thing I like to do with the milk is heat it up in the microwave first for like three minutes. It gets it somewhat warm so that we're not standing there with the pot for ever and ever, you know. Milk is going in to our little flour goodness. Bring this baby to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, we'll let it go for about a minute. Then we'll take it off, we'll add the cheese. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's getting boily, it's getting good. It's about to become the mac and cheese, yay! I hope you can hear me, vacuum's going, we're adding cheese. Oh yeah. This is off the heat, by the way. And we're just gonna do this until it melts. You can use cheddar, you can use all kinds of options. Let's see what this one says. You can use shredded cheddar cheese. This one's Colby Jack. Um, you can use processed, sharp processed American or Swiss cheese, American cheese loaf. This was from the 90s. I don't even know what this is. But this is the recipe that my family uses just from the Betty Crocker cookbook from the 90s. And we just use this juice. I don't know about these loaves and suches. Oh, suches. <laughs> oh man, Marcus has been helping this mama out. Look at dishes all done. He's like the dish master, really. So everything's washed, put away, and um, the dishwasher has a little bit in it. You know, you gotta refill it up. Then he's going vacuuming around here, wiping down the, the windows and just making this place shine. We're a good team, right, Marky? That's right. That's right. Okay, back to the mac and cheese. It's coming along, it is melting. Slowly but surely. Let's get to mixing, shall we? Oops. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, hold on. Uh, oh dear. Let's mix this baby up. Yeah. Yes. Oh my word. If that's not the cat's meow right there. Stir it up. Ooh. This is gonna be so good. Oh my goodness. 
this. Oh my word, I know. Look at all that goodness. <laughs> yes. It's so good. If that's not cheesy goodness, I don't know. What is? Can you imagine this being nice and bubbly and brown on the top? A little layer of like, you know, crispiness. Oh. Here we go. More basting, more basting. Is that not the most gorgeous? Whoa. gravy baby time. So I've got my pot here and my giblets. I'm going to fill it up with some water and let it go for 30 minutes and then we'll do the rest. I had to open that door. Mama's having hot flashes up in her. So I think we're really close to putting the stuffing, the rolls, the mac and cheese, and the mashed potatoes all into the oven. This guy is coming to a boil. He's doing his thing. I'll probably put a lid on it really quick here. Turkey's close to being done. We need to take him out and give him a chance to air out, you know, and let all the juices reflow back in through everything and do what it's supposed to do, which will be fantastic. Turkey time! Look at this beautiful turkey. Oh, it's getting dangerous. Oh, everything's going in now. Here we go. We got mac and cheese. One. We've got stuffing that I made uh, yesterday with my dad. Mashy taters with pats of buttery goodness. Got the rolls. Oh, they're pretty. We gotta cover up our turkey. Kim gets naked and sad. We'll just do a light cover to it. Hi! Come on in! Things are getting exciting. So I am done with the giblets doing their boil here. I'm gonna take them out reserve the liquid that it's been boiling in and then we're going to add all of our turkey uh, goodness down in the pan and add flour and you just wait. What am I looking for is the question. I remember now. Here we go. Whoa! How goes it? Oh. Okay, we're buzzing, we're doing, we're going. I have got the goodness from the bottom of the pan. Let's add how much? Quarter cup of, no, lies, a third a cup of flour and we'll whisk it up and make another little roux. All right, third a cup, here we go. Okay, whoa, that got out of control really fast. We're looking for a deep golden brown, folks. Keep your eye on this guy. Okay, I think this is looking pretty. I'm gonna add the chicken broth to it. 32 ounces or more, it says, and this is 32. So we'll try this, mix it, and if we need to add anything else, we will. Let's do a quick recap. We've got the gravy going. It's not thickening, but I know it will. Green beans, um, we just heated that up. We, somebody brought some veggies. We've got our butter, salted and unsalted. We have the little candy yams that uh, somebody brought. What's in here? Ooh, I don't know what that is, but it looks good. Pie, Izzy's grabbing out. We've got our turkey turkey just chilling. 
Rolls are done. And then mac and cheese. Everybody's looking excellent. Here it is, guys. Look at this beautiful turkey turkey. Oh my pies. And this is like a pumpkin crumble type thing. We got the green beans. This really thickened up pretty. Look at that. Probably could be a little thicker, but you know what? Don't look too close. All the goodies. More butters. More, 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 more. Coffee. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hope you have an amazing time celebrating with your family, and uh, we'll talk to you really soon. Bye, guys. I'm at the kitty table. Look at this plate of goodness. What? I really went all out. Maybe like a little too much. So I just wanted to try this cranberry sauce with you. You're gonna love the flavors. That is very good. I would highly suggest that you use orange juice and not cranberry juice unless you like it super tart because it has kept its tartness but man, that's good. What else do we have? We've got the mac and cheese. Come on. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. How about the stuffing? Whoa. How's the gravy, Stuffing is fantastic. The gravy, delicious. And the turkey. Oh man, whoa, that's a really big. Whoa, it's out of control. No. Oh. Somebody brought corn casserole, okay. Candied yam, okay. Ooh, now that is good. And green beans. I really wish y'all could just come over and eat all of this with us. It's so good, it's so good. That's all I have to say. The cranberry sauce though, yes. New, new, having some turkeys? You like it? <laughs> she just came over here and started eating by herself. <laughs>